there's so much good in the world and there is so much beauty that how could we possibly believe in the devil? The problem of evil and the problem of suffering is the insurmountable problem of any academic treatment of religion. And I think any religious studies course, any theology course that would try to sidestep that uh, will immediately lose credibility and will even lose the engagement of the students. Uh, even people from the most comfortable backgrounds have suffered and do suffer. Uh, it is the inescapable human experience. And perhaps it's simply because we are embodied spirits and we love each other and yet there's always this distance between us and the ones we love. Bernano says to love is to suffer. And since we're called to love and we exist only in love, then we cannot exist without suffering. If we begin to divide up suffering into categories, uh, it's quite easy to understand human freedom, and so I suffer because of bad choices that I made in my own freedom. Harder, and yet also finally intellectually understandable, is that I suffer because of the free choices of others who, in their freedom, choose to harm me. Uh -huh. Far harder still is to explain to enter into, even to face, the suffering of the innocent at the hands of nature, viruses, earthquakes, where Hurricane Mitch comes in and destroys a whole countryside, and we see a father looking at a mudslide saying, my children are here somewhere. How can God allow this? Can I understand a God who permits or causes the suffering of innocent beings? Can I love such a God? I cannot not. It is perhaps the first question that we will ask God when we see God face to face is why this kind of a world? Why limitation? Uh, I'm not satisfied with any answer I've heard yet. I, I would be with Job, and I would, after having complained and protested and exhausted every line of questioning, and that after having dismissed every facile explanation, I think I would be willing to fall into silence and face the whirlwind and there receive some comfort and some intimacy with God. I think it's easy for us to be with Job on the other side of the whirlwind experience and show compassion for the ones even who torment us, to pray for those who persecute us. But that does not yet answer our question about this. Uh, So I think those, those are the two, the two responses. One is unending questioning and dissatisfaction with every answer. And the other is comfort and to offer comfort to those who are the victims of suffering and to stand with them and not to avoid the terror of it. So we must embrace the cross to move into the very ambiguous silence of Easter.